Hi guys and welcome back again. Save Jawad coming back with another video. Uh, this time it's a treat. Last time it was about testing a deployed and containerized Java application. This time we're going for the next step, debugging Java applications containerized and running on Kubernetes. Now, how do you do that? The application is no longer running on your PC per se. It could be running anywhere in the cloud. And you still want to know what's happening with it and what is going wrong. So that's what we are going to talk about today. And let's do a live demo. So it is the same application you have done the last time we used the last time to containerize and send to a Kubernetes cluster. And we're going to do the same thing today. I'm going to start up my Docker desktop, which contains my Kubernetes uh, test cluster and wait for it to start. And there it is. Whoop, up, 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 up. In the meantime, <clears throat> let's go ahead and build the application. We're going to run. So now that the application has been built, we're going to go to the next phase and we are going to containerize it. I've shown this in the last video and we are going to run in the terminal a CCD application and MVN and then the name of the plugin, jib and then docker build. Let it go. Let's see create and the image has been created now we are going to deploy it to our kubernetes cluster let's see and we're gonna do that by going to another directory this is the integration test because that's a part of how i created the script that deploys it locally to kubernetes and we're going to do that by doing test install. So now it's going to go and run our installation. In the meantime, using the tool Octant. So let's see if we have pods running. Ah, it has created a pod. Let's look at its logs. And it looks like it has already started and completed. And it's ready. Test it. And again, I forgot the porting of the port forwarding. And let's do this. Port. So what did we do? To be able to debug first i'm going to show you that it can debug and that it is running localhost and voila so we have multiple endpoints that we can use let's go for the generation of a bank account number aha so it works right now the next step i am going to create Edit configurations and then add remote. So we're gonna go remotely connect to the JVM debugging port on the application in Kubernetes. So it's localhost because Kubernetes is running on my local host and we're gonna connect to port 5005 and uh, give it a name. So local remote debug and we're going to click on debug so basically now we're debugging ah look at this so the application the kubernetes cluster was checking if my application needs a restart let's let it go otherwise it's gonna uh, gonna hinder the whole process it's going to restart my pod we don't want it uh, kubernetes to think that our application has crashed and we'll go to the bank number and I'm going to go to the generate endpoint here in this. Make it a bit bigger. So yeah, 
So this is our bank number controller and we want to debug right here to see if the generation endpoint is actually working. And click. Ah, it's working. Fantastic. So now we can see the application in its work. So let's see, let's go F8 and F7 and F7 and huh? oh I was actually hoping that we would go into the uh, the implementation and that it would do that but it didn't so I'm gonna put another uh, another uh, uh, breakpoint here and also in the uh, random generator implementation of the bank account so I'm gonna put one here so I'm expecting it to go there I'm just gonna let it go for now and if we go back to the endpoint yeah it generated something and we're gonna do it again so I'm going to remove this endpoint and voila it's going into the uh, generation uh, portion of the bank account number service and if I would let it go again and yes it came into the bank account number generator in this case and it's going to go through all the instances here ah, it found the number great and it sent it back here so it works we're debugging inside kubernetes and how did we do that i'm going to show you now so basically what we did is a few steps. You need to create your image uh, and during that creation, you need to tell the image, listen, if you're gonna start the application, start it also with a debugging port. And where we did that is in several places. One of them is uh, in the POM XML of the application portion where the JIP uh, where, where the jib is going to dockerize our application and here it is so this is the plugin this is the plugin for maven in this case but it works the same if you are using gradle and we could do that in the future but it's the same basic idea and what we did here is tell it explicitly listen when you're going to make the container well make it uh, register it in the registry there and uh, use uh, this base image uh, that, that contains a Java runtime environment but this is the portion we're interested in we're going to tell it like okay use this Java virtual machine flag when you're starting the application and we're gonna tell it to do debug that's portion one we're gonna tell the application okay start your debugging mode and open uh, at this port and then we're going to tell the jib listen we need this port the 8080 which is normal port normally that runs a java application if you're running tomcat for example which is underwater i think is the same implementation being run at the moment i think i have even seen it in the logs and open and uh, open this listening port as well so the container when it's going to run is going to be enabling two ports the 8080 and the 5005 for debugging but that's not enough this is just a portion this is the portion now we have told first of all the application to actually listen and debug by giving it the jvm flags and the settings we have told jib that is going to make the container image for docker to open two ports one of them is the debugging port and then we're going to go to the next step so this is the part that is uh, going to be for uh, containerizing this application when we are deploying it to kubernetes and that's here so inside these uh, these settings i created a, a chart a helm chart that is going to be used for um, enabling these ports to be open and serviceable for the application 
which is going to be ran inside Kubernetes, inside these deployments. So what do we have here? Well, we have a deployment, as I said before. So in this deployment, we're going to tell Kubernetes, listen, our container needs these two ports. Please make them available to us. Fantastic. So this portion is important. The other uh, information you can look through, but they are beside the point. These are the these are the ports and the settings inside the, for the container to be opening these ports and making them available. And then, if you want to connect to them locally, you have the service. So the service that is going to be uh, using that deployment is also something you need to configure to tell it, okay, listen, please make these ports available. So service, deployment, container. These are the three places. Oh, service, uh, uh, sorry. I mean, service, deployment, Docker container, and application settings that we are going to do with the GVM flag. So now you have the whole street from like from one end all the way to the other end to our application from the port that we are going to actually connect from our IDE with a remote connection all the way to the application inside the Kubernetes pod. Now, please just try it out. This has solved so many problems for so many colleagues. And when I did it, they actually say, oh, thank you for making that possible because we didn't have it and we were just trying things on our machine couldn't replay sometimes i mean rarely you cannot reproduce but we, it did happen that we couldn't reproduce some problems and in this case if you do it this way then you can so if you want to enable your application to do that uh, you can take my application fiddle around, around with it uh, see if you can do the same with your application just remember this and this is important when you're done, you don't want your debug port to be open for other people to be able to debug inside your application. So you need to remove it. And you could do that in a, in a lot of ways. One of them in Maven, anyhow, is uh, by creating a separate build profile that only enables debug when you are explicitly telling it like, listen, I want debug, put a debug. Now, the way I put it, is just for your testing only and for development purposes only. So please don't leave that open in your application when you're going to production, that is just a security risk. And I don't want to be liable for that or, or anyhow. Uh, it is your responsibility and you need to keep your code safe. I just wanted to show you that it is puzzle and how to do it. Um, thank you for watching, enjoy, try it at home. Don't burn, burn down the house. <laughs> on production, I mean. And uh, yeah, see you till the next time. Bye.